This is Math 5700, lecture number 44, in which we cover parts of section 7.7, .7, which is about the so-called moment generating function. So what is a moment generating function? Well, you have uh, a random variable, x, And what I want to do then for every number t, we can look at e to the power of tx. This is another random variable. So let's define the moment generating function m of t to be the expected value of this new random variable. This depends upon t. And let's remind you uh, what it is. Now there are two cases. There's the continuous and the discrete. So if we are in the discrete case, this is just the sum over all x's, e to the tx times p of x. So where x is discrete. So and this is in the discrete case. And in the continuous case, it's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the tx times f of x dx. So in the first case, you're taking a sum, not an integral, and you're using a probability mass function. In the second case, you're integrating and you're using the probability density function. Okay, so this is the definition of the moment generating function of a random variable. And I wanna derive some properties of it and also do some examples. Okay, so here's a property. So let's consider the derivative. Now, I should point out that the integral and the sum may or may not exist uh, uh, as, a, uh, as an actual function, right? You're, for example, integrating, it's an improper integral. It may not exist, but we're going to assume today in this lecture that it always exists. Um, and uh, it's uh, for any reasonable uh, probability, uh, random variable you use, it will exist. So uh, that's going to be assumed. So now what is m prime of t? Well, we're gonna take the derivative with respect to t. Uh, let's just consider the continuous case, but everything I do works also in the discrete case, e to the tx, f of x dx. Now we're integrating with respect to x. t is not being integrated, we're differentiating. And it's not always true, but under most, uh, most, uh, in most cases that occur in real life, you can commute the derivative with the integral sign. So that means this is the integral uh, of the derivative respect to time of e to the tx times f of x dx. Now from the point of view of t, x is a constant. So we're just integrating uh, e to the tx here, uh, di differentiating e to the tx. So that's gonna give me uh, x e to the tx, f of x dx. And what do you know? We can stare at this and see that this is the same thing as the expected value of x, uh, the expected value of x e to the tx. So that's our first, um, our first, uh, first thing. M prime of t equals the expected value of x e to the tx. Okay, so let's box that off. So in particular, a special case is to take t equals zero. So if we take t equals zero, we get 
m prime of zero is x e to the zero, x times e to, it's the expected value of x. So that's actually also a nice thing. Okay, so now let's take this formula in the yellow box and differentiate it again. In order to do that, I'm going to need to um, save the screen and clear it. So uh, m prime of t we saw was the expected value of x e to the t x. So let's take m double prime of t. Well, that is the derivative respect to time of m prime of t, which is the same thing as the derivative respect to time, uh, t is time in my world, of the expected value of uh, x e to the t x, which is equal to the derivative of the integral uh, uh, of x e to the t x f of x dx. Again, I'm going to commute integration and, differenti uh, and differentiation. So this where is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the derivative of x e to the t x times f of x. It's the t, t derivative though. And so you're going to get, it's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x squared e to the t x f of x dx. In other words, it's the expected value of x squared e to the tx. So you can see the pattern. The nth derivative uh, of the moment generating function is equal to the expected value of x to the n e to the tx. And if we evaluate this at t equals zero, we get the following fact that the nth derivative evaluated at zero is equal to the, the expected value, the nth moment. This is the nth moment of, of the random variable. This is where the, the moment generating function gets its name from, in fact. Okay, so this is really, really neat, in my opinion. And uh, I want to sort of talk about a, a consequence of that. So, so if here's a consequence, if uh, if um, uh, if well, let me say it this way: the consequence is this: the Taylor series, the the Maclaurin series. For, uh, for m of t is given by uh, the, the, the sum of the nth derivative. This is the definition of the Maclaurin series, t to the n over n factorial. And this is going to be given by the sum, n go, this n goes from 0 to infinity, of course, of the, expect, the nth moment of x over n factorial t to the n. So that is, so if m of t is, um, is equal to its Maclaurin series, so-called analytic function, and it often is, If you don't know what analytic refers to, it just says it equals to, it equals its Maclaurin series near zero. Uh, then m of t equals uh, this 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 series, which is uh, one plus e of x times t plus e of x squared times t squared over two factorial and so on. So the nth term is e of x to the n, the nth moment, t to the n over t over n factorial, and it goes on. Okay, so that's, that's uh, a nice property if it's analytic. Okay, so what can we do with this? 
Um, well, here's another amazing property, which sort of tells you why it's important. And this is a fact, I'm not gonna prove it. If X and Y are random variables, then the moment generating functions, I'm assuming they exist here, are the same. I'm, I'm indicating the moment generating function for X by its by putting a subscript there. They're the same if and only if the cumulative distribution functions are the same, i.e. the moment generating functions determine the entire distribution. And if we differentiate this, this will imply that uh, the density functions agree as well in the continuous case. Somehow my screen is not responding well to my pen today. Okay, so that there you go. Um, and that's why it's significant. And this is the, this direction, the left, the right to left is easy. It's the, it's the other way that's hard, but this is a, a remarkable fact that if you know the moment, distrib uh, the moment, the moment uh, generating function, you know the distribution, you know the whole story. And if the moment generating function is analytic in the sense of the previous slide, that tells you that all the moments of your random variable determine the distribution. Uh, in that case. So that's kind of amazing in my opinion. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is some examples, okay? Just three examples. So um, the first example is let X be uniform of type zero one. So recall that means F of X is one if X is between zero and one and zero otherwise. So this is, a pro this is the density function for X. And then what is M of T in this case? M of T is the, is the expected value of E to the T X. And since, since the function F of X is, is, is non-zero only for X between zero and one, is the integral from zero to one of E to the T X. Oops, that should be lowercase X DX. Now, what is e to the t in the integral of e to the tx dx? Well, that's going to be the same thing as 1 over t e to the tx evaluated from x equals 0 to x equals 1. And this is the same thing as 1 over t times e to the t minus e to the 0, which is 1. Uh, so in other words, uh, this is what you get. This is the moment generating function. Now, um, you could actually compute what this is uh, as a series if you want, uh, because this is an analytic function. E to the t is equal to its own uh, Maclaurin series. So this is going to be uh, 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 e to the t is 1 plus t plus t squared over 2 factorial, blah, 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 blah. And then we're subtracting the one in parentheses and then the, the one over T becomes a T here. So what you're doing on the top, you're canceling the ones out and then the T's cancel out. Uh, every, power, every power of T cancels with a single power of T on the bottom. And you can see what you're getting here. You're getting one plus T over two factorial plus T squared over three factorial, et cetera the nth term is t to the n minus one over n factorial, uh, keeps going. Um, and so the coefficient of t to the n is here is one over n plus one factorial. So this is the Maclaurin series for this, for this um, moment generating function. And from this, we can immediately read off the moments, the moment of the nth moment of this random variable 
is going to be the coefficient in the power of t to the n, which is 1 over n plus 1 factorial. This is, so now we know all the moments of the uniform distribution. We couldn't have done this calculation before so easily. This is actually an amazing tool, the moment distribu uh, uh, distribution function. OK, so that was the first example. I want to talk about the second example. So let x be a discrete random variable. So let x be a binomial of type NP. OK, remember that arises from flipping a coin, a coin n times. It's biased. The probability of heads is P. So let's compute the moment generating function of that, M of T. Well, that's, we said, by definition, is the expected value of e to the t x. And instead of an integral, we get a sum. k is going from 0 to n. So I'm replacing x by k here because I'm thinking of this as a discrete number, right? So it's e to the t, uh, e to the t times k instead of e to the t x times the probability mass function, which was n choose k p to the k 1 minus p to the n minus k. Here I've used the fact that p of k is equal to n choose k p to the k 1 minus p to the n minus k. So that's the, um, that's the PMF in that case. OK, so now we can do a little bit of rewriting here because the p to the k, and e, you can think of the e to the t k as e to the t to the power of k, and then combine that with p to the k. So then this becomes the sum, k goes from 0 to n, of n choose k. We combined these two terms here into e, uh, e to the t times p in black though, to the k, one minus p, to the n minus k. Okay, so uh, now I'm gonna use a well-known fact, uh, the binomial theorem, which says that if you take a sum of two numbers, x and y to the nth power, that's the sum of n choose k, x to the k, y to the n minus k, where k goes from 0 to n. So if you apply that with x equals e to the t times p and y equals 1 minus p, you're going to get the sum is given by e to the t times p plus 1 minus p to the nth power. So, uh, so therefore, uh, we see that um, m of t in this case is e to the t times p plus one minus p to the nth power. Okay, um, so, so there you go. We can actually use this to calculate the, uh, the, um, the moments of the, uh, of, the, of the binomial random variable. Let me just calculate the first moment, which is the expected value. So if we use this formula, we can take m prime of t. Now, what is, we're differentiating with respect to t, so this is like some number to the nth power. It's gonna be uh, the power rule, n e to the t times p plus one minus p to the n minus first power times the derivative with respect to t on the inside, which is e to the t times p. Okay, so now in order to get the m prime of zero, which is the expected value, we got to stick in t equals zero. So you're going to get n. Okay, so then when t is when t is zero, we're going to get p plus one minus p appearing inside the parentheses to the n minus one times e to the zero times p. Another, and if you evaluate what this is, you get n times p. So, but m prime of zero is the expected value of this random variable. So then we can conclude 
that uh, in the that the expected value of the binomial random variable, which we've actually knew already, is n times p. So this gives you another way to do the calculation. You can do all the moments this way. Uh, it's not hard to do. I'm not going to do any other moments in this case. Okay. So I'm going to give you one final example, which is the let x be an exponential random variable. Recall that this has p, a probability density function f of x equals lambda e to the minus lambda x if x is at bigger than or equal to zero and it's zero otherwise. Okay, so what is the moment generating function? Let's compute it. So what is m of t? That's the uh, expected value of e to the t x, which is the integral. Now we don't have to integrate from minus infinity to infinity because the random variable is zero between minus infinity and zero. So it's the integral from zero to infinity of e to the t x times the value of the, p, the density function, which is lambda e to the minus lambda x, and then we're integrating over x. Now we can rewrite this. This is the integral from zero to infinity of lambda uh, and e. Uh, and it's convenient to write it in this way, minus lambda minus t x. We'll see why down the road, dx. Okay, so now how do you integrate this? You stare at it and you realize that we can find, we can guess the antiderivative. The antiderivative should have something to do with e to the minus lambda minus tx. Um, but we have to put in a fudge factor. There should be a lambda here. And the fudge factor is one over minus lambda minus t. And here we're integrating from zero to infinity, x equals zero to x equals infinity. Okay, so now uh, we should be, if, if, if t, if the exponent here is positive, this thing is gonna blow up. So you want the exponent to be negative. The only way that happens is when t is less than lambda. So if t is less than lambda, then the exponent is going to be uh, going to be negative. So assume t is less than lambda. And then what do we get when we evaluate? So then the uh, when we plug in infinity, we're going to get zero. And then we plug in zero, we're going to get uh, uh, lambda over minus lambda minus t, which is equal to lambda over lambda minus t. So that is, uh, that's, that's what it is. So, so um, m of t equals lambda over lambda minus t, provided that uh, t is less than lambda. Okay, uh, there's a good reason to assume that t is less than lambda, you'll see right now. Okay, um, so, uh, so let's let's uh, let's keep going with this. So, m of t equals lambda over lambda minus t for t less than lambda, and that's the same thing by dividing top and bottom by lambda of one over one minus t over lambda. So now we know. Here's the reason why t is less than lambda. We know that this is the sum of a geometric series. Uh, so t is less than lambda means that t over lambda is actually less than absolute value less than one. And we know that in that case, the geometric series, this is one plus t over lambda plus t squared over lambda squared, et cetera. So in other words, this is the series, this is the, let me, let me rewrite this in a slightly more neat way. This is 
1 plus t over lambda plus t squared over lambda squared plus t cubed over lambda cubed, etc. Okay, so now we know what m of t is. And the reason why t is less than lambda is to guarantee we can rewrite this as a series. It converges and the function is analytic. And from this, we can read off immediately what the, uh, mo this is gonna be the, the, the Maclaurin series and we can read the moments off. The moment, of uh, the nth moment is one over lambda to the n. We couldn't have done this before. And this is true for lambda n equals zero, one, two, et cetera. So in particular, we can compute the variance of this distribution as one over lambda squared. Oh, first of all, we can compute the expected value. That's one over lambda. And we can compute, we can compute the variance as the one over lambda squared, that's the second moment minus the square of one over lambda, and you get zero from that. So, uh, so, so you can see here that the moment generating function is an extremely useful tool, tool if you can actually calculate it. And I think that's where I'm gonna end today. We are done now with chapter seven.